The sun, just like humans, goes through phases before it fades away. It's currently in the main sequence phase of its life, during which it is fusing hydrogen into helium in its core. This phase will last for about 10 billion years. After that, the sun will eventually exhaust the hydrogen fuel in its core and begin to fuse helium. The helium fusion will cause the sun's core to shrink and heat up, while its outer layers expand and cool, causing it to appear red. At this point, the sun has entered the red giant phase, the final stage of the sun's life. During this phase, the sun expands to a size larger than the orbit of Earth, meaning the inner planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, will potentially vaporize. The outer planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, are far enough away from the sun that they may survive the red giant phase. However, this expansion will cause the orbit of outer planets to become more elliptical, and they may experience increased radiation and heat. Some research suggests the surviving planets may even be pushed out of the solar system altogether. The expanding outer layers will also cause the sun to lose a significant amount of mass in the form of a stellar wind. The shed material will form a planetary nebula, a beautiful and colorful cloud of gas and dust. At this point, the shed outer layers will leave behind at the center a dense core known as a white dwarf. The red giant phase can last for millions of years. The fate of the red giant star after this phase depends on its mass. If the star has a mass lower than about eight times the mass of the sun, it will shed its outer layers and become a white dwarf. But stars about 8 to 40 times more massive than the Sun go through a red supergiant phase, meaning the core will continue to fuse elements heavier than helium, leading to a supernova explosion. When it's all said and done, these massive stars leave behind either a neutron star or a black hole. But in the case of the Sun, which is relatively small, we will have a white dwarf. White dwarfs are extremely dense, with a mass similar to the Sun, but a radius of only about the size of Earth. They no longer generate energy through nuclear fusion, and instead slowly cool down over billions of years. Because white dwarfs are the remnant cores of normal stars, they're primarily made of the waste products of the nuclear fusion reactions that made them shine before they turned into white dwarfs. These waste products are primarily carbon and oxygen, with traces of other elements. When the white dwarf is first formed, it's very hot and emits a lot of heat and light. As the white dwarf cools, it emits less heat and light and its surface temperature drops. This causes the star to appear redder in color, and eventually, it will become a black dwarf, which is a white dwarf that has cooled to the point that it no longer emits any heat or light. But keep in mind that black dwarfs are strictly theoretical. The universe is about 13.7 billion years old. White dwarfs, on the other hand, take at least 100 million billion years to cool down and become black dwarfs. This means the universe is too young for black dwarfs to exist. White dwarfs can also be used to estimate the age of nearby star clusters, as the cooling process allows us to estimate the time elapsed since the formation of the white dwarf. Don't forget to watch the video on the right and subscribe. Thanks for being part of Cosmonology.